All right, all right. Hey, it's me, John in the Desert, and today I'm going to be sharing with you my secrets of rusting my world. So, bang, bat, cha, cha. It's time for Chemistry Review 101. So, how does this work? Hydrogen peroxide, hydrogen per oxide, one hydrogen per one oxygen. It's H2O2, H2O2. That's the chemical composition of hydrogen peroxide. What does that mean to me? Well, because I am a man of science, it means this. So, hydrogen peroxide. I'm starting with a piece of metal which has, oh yeah, that stuff in it known as iron. If I want to turn iron into iron oxide, also known as rust, I need to steal an oxygen from something. So, if I use hydrogen peroxide and I steal one oxygen from the hydrogen peroxide and add it to my metal, what are my byproducts? Stripping one hydrogen from hydrogen peroxide, I end up with a, a byproduct of H2O, water, and iron oxide. So I'm converting H2O2 into H2O and iron oxide. That's where we get our rust. Why do I need the muriatic acid? Well, I really don't. But all on its own, metal will form a scale. It'll form a, a like a protective layer. It grows a skin on it, very, very small, very, very thin. However, if I take a little muriatic acid, it opens up the pores. It allows, yeah, the process to happen much, much quicker. So I'm using the muriatic acid to prep the metal hydrogen peroxide to do my work, turning H2O2 into H2O and iron oxide. This is how we do it. These two ingredients. Ingredients. First off, I have muriatic acid available from the local hardware store. This container is enough to do probably twice what I need, and that's about $10 a gallon. And second, I have good old-fashioned hydrogen peroxide. And this hydrogen peroxide, I get this at the dollar store. It's a lot cheaper than getting it at the local pharmacy or, or whatever. So this is a dollar a bottle. It's a quart bottle, so $4 a gallon. And I used, I think, 10 gallons on this project here. I'm sorry, 10 bottles two and a half gallons on this project. So hydrogen peroxide, our other main ingredient. So the very first real step in the whole process of getting yourself some good looking rust is to start off your material and get it clean. So I took all these panels down to the car wash before I even started, threw them on my trailer, unloaded them at the car wash, hit them with some degreaser, hit them with some high pressure wash, hit them with the foam brush, hit them with the degreaser again, hit them with some clear or some uh, rinse. And so I've got all of the uh, production oil off them because when they make these, they slather a bunch of oil and it will interfere with your rusting process. It'll just make it take a lot longer. So I don't like to wait, I'm a man on the move. So therefore, I'm gonna make my rust go quick, start off with some clean metal. So now, of course, I've got the muriatic acid loaded up into this garden spray jobby do, and I'm gonna go ahead and just fog on a layer of muriatic acid to my panels. This typically turns into an exercise of how long can John hold his breath? When you get a good whiff of this stuff, all of a sudden it hit you like a freight train. And I have not discovered any mask or anything that I can wear while doing this that will disguise in any way, shape, or form. Muriatic acid just cuts through the nasal passages like a freight train. Well, so now I've got them sprayed down with the muriatic acid. I went ahead and just let it sit there and uh, evaporate off. I didn't wash it off, I didn't rinse it off, I didn't wipe it off. I just sprayed it on, let it evaporate. And so there's a little residue of that muriatic acid that's still on there. But now I'm gonna go ahead and just spray it with a little hydrogen peroxide. You'll notice as soon as that hydrogen peroxide makes contact, you can see it instantaneously starts to rust. And no, I'm not spraying brown paint on here. That's actually the rusting process happening that quickly. To show you, yeah, it's hydrogen peroxide in there. And because that muriatic acid has really opened up the pores of the metal, made it very receptive to rust, this is what you get. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray all of these.
All right, five minutes and I'm gonna do it again. Round number two. All right, that is the end of round two. I'm gonna give it another five minutes. Squirt it again. Oh, right then, holy cow. I'm gonna move the camera, let you get a slightly different perspective of it. Let's see what that looks like. Can you see them? Yes, you can. All right, I'm gonna jump in, give it the third coat. All right, day is warming up. I'm heading outside. Let's go do that. Fourth and yes, final spray down hydrogen peroxide on our project. Kind of looking forward to having this one done behind me. Let's do it. Round number four starts now. Okay, you gotta give this thing a couple more pumps. Let's do it. Boom, there it is, just like that. <sighs> now let's go over, well, I'll take a look. I'll bring the camera with me. We'll show you what we've got. Right. So the length of this video is just slightly longer than real time. Of course, I sped it up so you didn't have to see me wallowing back and forth. But you can see the level of rust I've got is pretty good. And let me bring you down over this end here. See where this, uh, this section over here is a little lighter? That's where I didn't get all the uh, manufacturer's oil off of it. Um, but that's all right, it'll darken up in time. We've got a good base for the rust process and that's the way you do it. I'm gonna show you a couple other things that I've rusted over the years and uh, it, it's, a, it's a great trick, it's a great tool. It's super fast. Um, from start to finish, I'm probably less than an hour in on these panels and yes i did the backside too so let's go look at some other stuff here's a couple of here's a couple of panels that i had rusted a couple of weeks ago and even though i'm no longer spraying them they continue to darken they continue to age themselves and yeah that process never really stops here's the front to a little wood stove i did a couple of years ago and yeah i rusted it with the same process Right here is one of my sheds on the property, just plywood, and then I trimmed it out with a little bit of that corrugated tin, threw the corrugated tin up on the roof as well. But this is only a couple of months old, and yet it doesn't look like it was built yesterday. Now I've brought you out here to one of my old sheds I have on the property. Got some cool stuff stored back here. But this is an especially cool project in the fact that this vehicle this year turns 100 years old. So if we look at the rust that's on the body, um, that's a 100 year old rust. Now if we look at the door, say that rust is pretty much the same thing. However, when I bought this vehicle, it didn't have doors. 
So I hand fabricated the doors and then I rusted them to match the rest of the car. And so, yeah, you can see these are, these are certainly not original. They didn't come with spider webs and all that good stuff in them. So those are 10 year old doors alongside the 100 year old real body. Um, same thing is true with the deck lid. Now this deck lid, that is new. Made that the same time I made the doors. You see the rust patina almost exactly matches and yeah, it's all covered with a layer of dust now, but it almost exactly matches the rest of the car. Using that same muriatic acid hydrogen peroxide process, you can do wonders. We'll fool mother nature to think these doors and that deck lid are also 100 years old. Well, this is it. This is me, John in the desert, saying, hey, have a really rusty day. I still have stuff I need to clean up. I have stuff I need to do. Kind of back ourselves right on out of here. And if you have any questions or any comments, um, feel free. Send them out there. If you like, subscribe, all that other good stuff, click here, do that. You know, honestly, if you want to, great. I always post up some new and different and interesting stuff. Well, it's interesting to me anyway. But I know somebody's going to say, well... Why do you do it that way? Let's talk about the science behind it just this much. The science behind it, hydrogen peroxide, that's H2O2. H2O2, two hydrogen, two oxygen molecules bonded together making hydrogen peroxide. What are we looking for? We're taking iron and we want to rust it, which is iron oxide. So it's stealing an oxygen from the hydrogen peroxide, adding it to the metal and instantly creating rust. It's byproduct is water. So what's left over after you strip a, uh, an oxygen off an H2O2, you get H2O. There's your water. I get the rust in the benefit and it's really not all that nasty to work with. Yeah, you need to take precautions, wear some gloves. It will dry your hands out, but it's not going to kill you. That's a good thing. Anyway, <sighs> me, John in the desert saying I like to hang out, but I got stuff to do. I'm a busy guy. Till next time.